In this module, we will introduce ourselves to the concept of exact differentials and correspondingly inexact differentials. So let's begin by reviewing the notion of a total differential of a function f of x, y. In the previous module, we saw that the total differential of this function can be written as df of x, y is equal to partial f by partial x at with change in x plus partial f by partial y and change in y. So in general, these two things over here themselves will be some generic functions of x and y. Let's call them s of x comma y and let's call this one st of x comma y. And if we have been given the functional form of f, we could do this partial differentiation and calculate the exact form for s and t. A similar inverse question exists is if you have been given two generic functions, s of x comma y and t of x comma y, and then someone tells you that consider the function s of x comma y dx plus t of x comma y dy. Will, is this related to a total differential? In other words, do we have a function b of x comma y for which this will be true? Does such a function exist? given s of x comma y and t of x comma y. So once again, this might be a bit abstract, but you have to remember that previously we went from d of f x comma, we went from f of x comma y to s and t by doing this operation of differentiating. Now we are asking given s of x comma y and t of x comma y, is it possible to calculate the function from which these two could have been obtained? So these are two different problems. Turns out it's not always possible and there's a simple test to check when it's possible. This check is called Euler's test. Euler was a very, very famous mathematician who did a lot of very wonderful things. I recommend reading his biography on Wikipedia. It's fascinating. What Euler said, and we are not going to prove this because it's a bit complicated. Again, look it up on Wikipedia if you want, if you are interested in the proof. Euler said that given two such functions, if the partial of S with respect to Y is the same as the partial of T with respect to X, then this is going to be true. Then yes, indeed, this is an exact derivative. If this is true, then, then this is a total differential. Then D, then we will have an f of x comma y. Let's satisfying equation two will exist. We haven't yet figured out how to find that f of x comma y. That really takes us to differential equations and you can look that up in the module on differential equations, but it shows us that such a f, comma x, f of x comma y will exist. And in this case, s of x comma y dx plus t of x comma y dy is known as an exact differential. So given a functional form of s of x comma y dx plus t of x comma y dy, if the partial of s with respect to y it's the same as partial of t with respect to x. So you have to see that you're differentiating with respect to the thing that is not up here. Then such a differential form is known as an exact differential. We can consider, uh, and similarly, if partial s by partial y is not equal to partial t by partial x, then it is an inexact differential. And these are extremely important for physical chemistry. In fact, for something as basic as the first law of thermodynamics is really looking at properties of exact and inexact differentials. And we'll look at some examples in a bit. So let's start with just a simple mathematical example. Let's consider the differential 2x dx. 
plus 2y dy. So here our s of x comma y is 2x and t of x comma y is dy. So let's do our test. Partial s by partial y is equal to zero because there is no y dependence and partial t by partial x is also equal to zero. So there is no dependence. So in this case, it is indeed an exact differential and you can play around and you can check that the f of x comma y for which the following is true so the fact that it is an exact differential shows us that such an f of x comma y exists and it's easy to check that it will be given by f of x comma y is equal to x square plus y square Note carefully, I said it's easy to check. I did not say it's easy to derive. It's not that hard, but derivation is a bit trickier because you have to solve the differential equation. In this case, it's easy. In general case, the finding f given an exact differential is a bit harder. But now we know that such an f exists. So this is an exact differential. Let's look at a function which is not an exact differential and we can see how easy it is to check. Let's consider x square y dx plus y dy. So this is our s and this is our t. And in this case, partial s by partial y is equal to x square, while partial t by partial x is equal to zero. So they are not the same. So this one, is not an exact differential. This is an inexact differential. So this test of checking for the partial derivative is called an Euler's test and it's very useful for checking whether something is uh, exact differential or an inexact differential. So let's see an example from thermodynamics where it shows up a lot. Let's consider the most basic equation which is the ideal gas law pressure as a function of volume and temperature is equal to rt by v in this case you can write down the total derivative dp is equal to minus rt by v square dv plus r by v dt and it's easy to check and we actually did this in the last module that partial square v by partial v partial t is equal to partial square p by partial t partial v and both are equal to minus r by v square the exact value doesn't matter what matters more is that they are equal so this satisfies all its test and thus it if we were given if we had minus r t by v square dv plus r by v dt it would be an exact differential this brings us to a general concept of when should we expect in physics or chemistry to have exact differentials? So in general, all functions, all state functions in thermodynamics are or have have or are exact differentials. So this would be things such as internal energy U, entropy S, enthalpy H, and Possibly state functions are not clear to you right now. This is something we talk about in physical chemistry, but there we will also look at things such as work done and heat given to a system, which are inexact differentials. So these are exact differentials and these are inexact differentials. And there is an important change in notation that comes due to this. So whenever we are talking about change in U, it will be written as du, ds or dh but for w and q you will not see the letter d you will see something like a part of peculiar operator it's, it's, it's the delta operator w 
or delta q or sometimes it is written as this form so this is the notation for inexact and this is for exact so this is something that is quite common and the first law of thermodynamics basically says that the sum of two inexact differentials is an exact differential and we study that in uh, physical chemistry that brings us to the end of this module thank you very much